Can scientists provide us with a rational explanation for everything that archaeologists discover? The short answer to that question is no, they can't. The long answer is also no, but with some caveats. Scientists will do their best to provide an explanation with the information available, but sometimes there are gaps in their knowledge. The things you're about to see in this video fall into those gaps. We begin with a beautiful Hittite gold bracelet that was discovered accidentally by a farmer plowing his field in the Turkish village of Şitli in March 2022. The bracelet is around 3,300 years old and is the first artifact of its kind ever to be discovered with figural depictions on its surface. On top of that, it's also the first Hittite bracelet ever to be discovered with an elliptical bezel. The shape is known to have been important to the Hittites, but has only previously been seen in their ring seals. We're fortunate that the bracelet survived its encounter with the farming equipment, which left it dented and damaged. It's already undergone some preservation and repair work and will undergo a little more before it's placed on display inside the Coram Archaeological Museum. Enough repair work has been done to determine that the figure at the center of the Rapas relief is the goddess Ishtar, although the precise meaning or significance of the scene is unknown. Archaeologists carried out an extensive excavation of the field it was found in, but no other artifacts were discovered, so the bracelet's presence in the field is unexplained. Our ancient ancestors experimented with many different forms of armor on the battlefield, constantly searching for a material that offered the right balance between protection and flexibility. Before metal and bronze armor became popular, the Assyrians experimented with armor made from leather. Here, we see an example of their leather armor. It's about 2,700 years old and was discovered in China. The amount of work that went into creating the armor is incredible. It's made from more than 5,000 small pieces and 140 large leather scales, along with laces and lining also made from leather. The total weight of 10 pounds would have been heavy, but lighter and easier to move around in than almost any other option that would have been available at the time. How it came to be in China is unknown. Its owner could have been an Assyrian mercenary working in China, or it could have been a Chinese soldier who looted the armor from a defeated Assyrian foe. Some historians have even speculated that its presence in China could indicate a hitherto unknown technological exchange between the two regions. Newspaper writers enjoy creating funny headlines, so they had a field day with our next recent discovery. When a farmer found enormous armadillo shells on his land in Buenos Aires, Argentina in February 2020, some of the first experts to arrive at the scene told the press that the shells were about the same size as a Volkswagen Beetle. That was enough for the media to nickname them Carmadillos. Eh, we have to admit that it's a good pun. It isn't strictly accurate to call the owners of these vast shells Armadillos, though. They're actually Glyptodons, an ancient and much larger ancestor of the Armadillo that lived in this part of the world approximately 20,000 years ago and is extinct today. It's rare to find physical evidence of their existence, but these Argentinian examples have survived the passing of the years so well because they became deeply embedded in a muddy riverbed. Now they've been found, though, they might not last much longer. They're dangerously exposed to the elements, so paleontologists decided to extract the one-ton shells and move them to somewhere where they could be safely studied. Sure, this technically isn't archaeology, but it's still fascinating. The ancient city of Ashkelon in Israel has proven to be a rich hunting ground for archaeologists over the years, and so it proved to be again in April 2013 when a pair of remarkable artifacts were found at the location. A team of archaeologists from the Israel Antiquities Authority discovered an enormous ancient wine press and a tiny ceramic model of a church. The experts think that both objects date back to the early Byzantine era of the 5th and 6th centuries. The wine press is massive, covering an area of more than 300 square feet, 
and comprises a treading floor, a press bed, and three ceramic vats for collecting the wine. It's one of the largest and best preserved discoveries of its kind. But the tiny church is said to be even rarer. It was discovered close to the wine press, so it may have been dropped by someone in the process of making wine. There's a loop handle on the roof of the church, leading experts to believe that it was either hung on a wall or suspended from clothing. The experts also think that an oil lamp was once inserted into it, thus projecting cross-shaped shadows onto the walls of the building it was placed within. Now we have a remarkable find that happened in Tenosique, Mexico in August 2022. There, archaeologists have found a set of massive Olmec monuments, including a pair of carved limestone reliefs. The reliefs depict Olmec rulers in a ritual contortionist pose, which is said to have reduced oxygen levels in the brain and thereby induced a trance-like state. The Olmec believed this to be a divine process. Such depictions are extremely rare discoveries, so archaeologists in the country are excited. Each of the reliefs is large, around 5 feet in diameter, and also depict large faces wearing diadems and mirrors with Olmec crosses in their center. It's very hard to say how old these ancient works of art are, but this part of Tenosique, close to the Usamacinta River, was an important Olmec population center during the Olmec formative period of around 2,900 years ago. Experts in ancient South American art say that the style of the reliefs may have been influenced by the early Maya, but that's a controversial claim for which there isn't yet enough evidence to support it. The Mayans eventually became dominant in this part of the country around 2,500 years ago. Next, we go to Germany, where an ancient causeway was found right underneath the street in central Berlin in February 2022. Archaeologists believe that the causeway is at least 700 years old. Berlin was founded in 1237, so that would make this causeway, which is beneath Stralauer Strasse, one of the first ever to be laid in the city. The causeway is wooden, so archaeologists have been able to date it using tree ring analysis. The trees were cut down in 1238, and it's logical to assume that after being cut down, they were used as building materials immediately. All of the wood, which is a mixture of birch, pine, and oak, was taken from in and around the Berlin area. The planks have survived for this long because they were buried under thick layers of peat, which is an excellent preservative. It's likely that the purpose of the causeway was to provide a means of bypassing a nearby river, thus providing a viable route into the new city for traders. We often refer to this part of European history as the Dark Ages, but it's clear that the city builders of the time weren't lacking in knowledge or ability. A whole 14 pre-Incan mummies were recently discovered at the archaeological site of Cayamaquia in Peru not far from the Peruvian capital city of Lima. The mummies range in age between 800 and 1,000 years. Six of them are children, but the remainder are adults. Only two of the adults are female. It's possible that the remains represent several generations of the same family, but there's a grislier theory. Some of the archaeologists responsible for the find suspect that they might have been sacrificed at the time of the burial of an elite local figure whose tomb was found close to here in 2021. They would have been intended to become the elite figure's servants in the afterlife. However, there's some evidence here that contradicts that idea. The mummies were buried with personal goods, including knitting tools, ceramic pots, and calabashes. Sacrificial victims didn't tend to be buried with any grave goods at all. So maybe these people escaped that grim fate after all. The pre-Columbian people of the Andes believed that biological death marked the transition of the soul to another world, so fear of death may not have been common. Finding an old Roman mosaic in Italy might not sound especially rare or implausible at first, but wait until you hear where this one was discovered. It's the beautiful floor of what would once have been an enormous Roman villa, and it was found beneath the mud and grass of a vineyard in Negrar di Valpolicella slightly north of Verona. 
The frustrating thing about this discovery is that it could have been made a century ago. Archaeologists noted the presence of Roman artifacts in the vineyard in 1922, but decided there was no point in doing any further digging and left the scene alone. If they'd gone another few feet into the earth, they'd have found the mosaic floor, which is covered in fantastic depictions of birds and fruits, there and then. The vineyard is part of a commune, so any further excavations will have to be carried out with the permission of the commune's occupants, who would presumably have to be financially compensated for the temporary or permanent loss of their vineyard. That extra layer of complication might mean that the full villa is never excavated, and we never get an answer to the question of who thought planting a vineyard on a mosaic floor was ever a good idea in the first place. The ice patches of Lendbreen and Langfanne in Norway are melting. Whether you believe that's down to human-induced climate change or not is up to you, but you can't deny that it's a problem. However, within that problem is an opportunity for archaeologists, who have been able to recover artifacts that have been stuck in the ice for centuries. One of those artifacts is this 1,700-year-old arrow, which is still in near pristine condition. It's in such good condition that there's still a piece of feather fletching attached to it. The arrow was recovered from what's been described as the deepest core of the ice patch, indicating that it might have been fired by hunters who tracked creatures into the center of the ice sheet, where they sheltered from insects that might have bitten them during the summer months. The projectile end of the arrow is delicately tapered, but the knock end of the arrow is wide enough for us to understand that the bow that fired the weapon was unusually thick. Additionally, traces of the tar that attached the fletching to the shaft are still present. Our knowledge of the craft skills of ancient Norse hunters has been considerably improved by this lone artifact. Scientists have been racing against time to rescue our next discovery ever since they found it. It's a 1,300-year-old ship that was found in France, and it's of an exceptionally rare design. The vessel could be enormously significant to historians and researchers, but it might not last long enough for them to examine it. In their current state, the oak, chestnut, and pine beams of the wrecked vessel are so delicate that they have to be watered every 30 minutes to ensure they don't disintegrate. The 40-foot-long boat was found on the banks of the Garonne in southwest France in early 2022, but the building materials it's made from hadn't been touched by the air or the light since the day it sank. That makes them extremely vulnerable. Radiocarbon dating indicates that the vessel sank between 680 and 720, and is remarkably advanced based on what we know about the French naval architecture of the Middle Ages. It might have been the first ship of its kind, or an experimental vessel that was deemed a failure after the sinking. Unless we can stabilize the wreck enough to examine it properly, we might never know. As the Second World War drew to a close, a lot of art and valuable property was looted from German cities. Among the items stolen was a silver-gilded crossbow trophy from the early 17th century, which was taken from the broken remains of Dresden City Hall. The priceless artifact found its way to the United States of America and spent decades on display inside the Philadelphia Museum of Art, but in July 2022, it was finally returned to its rightful home. The trophy was awarded to Elector Johann Georg I of Saxony when he won Dresden's Whitsun Crossbow Shooting Competition in 1618, but he then donated the trophy to the city, as had become the tradition at the time. History doesn't record exactly who took it from Dresden to begin with, but it was next seen in a private collection in Switzerland in 1956. The owner of the collection bequeathed the trophy to the Philadelphia Museum of Art in 1977, the museum wasn't aware of the object's origins at the time, but found it on a list of lost German art in 2016. From there, it took a further six years to get the trophy home, but at least it got there in the end. Finally, we have a clay figurine that was found in Bavaria, Germany in July 2022. It's a fairly rustic-looking artifact, but historians think it might be a representation of a prehistoric water goddess. 
The best guess of experts is that it was made somewhere between 2,500 and 2,800 years ago, which means it's a relic of the Iron Age. That tallies with the fact that it was found close to the remains of a Hallstatt period settlement near the Unkenbach lowlands. The Hallstatt culture once dominated this part of Western Europe, beginning in the Late Bronze Age and lasting until the Early Iron Age. Although the figurine looks to be in rough shape, it shows no sign of the kind of rounded weathering that would be expected of hydraulic action. That suggests it was deposited in the gully it was found in deliberately, making it highly likely to have been a votive offering and further supporting the idea it might be connected to a water goddess. The gully would have been a sacred place for ritual offerings such as these. This might be a habit that the people of the Hallstatt culture picked up from the cultures that lived around the Black Sea, who started making figures like this 5,000 years ago. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!